Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the reassembly of the drag transmission. So you can see here on the workbench, I've got everything laid out, got everything cleaned up. Um, got the new seal kit in, basically so I can seal the external part of it, you know, cause I tore it down to inspect it. I don't want to reuse any of my old gaskets or seals. So I ordered a gasket kit, a new filter. Um, you can see kind of right about there is the new filter. Stick the air, we go learn to control my finger and hand there. Um, you know, for like 27 bucks off eBay. Guy shipped it priority mail, believe it or not. I had it a couple of days. So, and that was by, uh, by the way, from Phoenix Transmission, um, who I was able to get this seal kit in. And the filter, like I said, for 27 bucks shipped priority mail for $27, I think it was, with sales tax. Um, so not too bad. Um, so I've got pretty much all the new gaskets and seals put in where I need to. Um, you know, I've sealed up the transmission in a couple places as well. Um, you know, this back area, right, where it can leak. Um, I'm gonna gain control of my hand. You know, in this area underneath the cross member, as well as, um, you know, right here for my uh, speedometer cable. So I put the new seal in there and the new O-ring and go ahead and put that back together. So I've got those couple areas now sealed up good. I used a little uh, sealant, you know, as well in here, along with the gasket, just to make sure this seals up, um, because again, it is under the cross member. So I wanted to make sure that is, was uh, sealed up really good. Um, you know, it only took a few dabs of silicone just to go around a couple of spaces and then put the gasket in place and then put the plate on and screw it back in. So um, again, just kind of a safety measure just on my part. So what I need to do now is put the cross member back on and then we'll put in a couple of the gear sets here and then I'll show you why I put the cross member on. Um, because I basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this thing up vertical over a trash can. And the reason being I'm using the trash can as well, my engine is occupying the engine stand. Um, and I, need, I wanted to make up a fixture um, to mount the transmission onto the engine stand so I could you know, do it a little easier and nicer. Uh, it would be held in place for me instead of me trying to hold it and then put everything in. And I'll show you why I'm having to do that. Um, I don't like lying my transmission down like this when putting in, you know, my inch ship, you know, putting in this into this. And the reason being is, you know, and I'll set up the camera to give you a little better view, explain, but basically I've got to have my frictions lined up um, you know, to this drum here, right? And what happens is if they're laying on their side while well, I'm trying to get the front pump on, basically this can kind of work its way loose. Um, you know, the friction then won't align when I try to put the pump on. Now I've got too much pressure because now the pumps try to force that friction back over, you know, the spline in here, okay, and get everything lined up. So, that's why I'm stacking up the transmission vertical so I can set those in vertical, set my pump on vertical, tighten the pump up, and then I can lay the transmission back down, um, you know, so I can bolt the valve body and that kind of stuff on. So I'll set this up. Let me put these couple of parts back in real quick. Um, I'll show you that. And then, like I said, I'll hold it up and I'll show you what I mean, um, why I, I'm, I'm doing it. By the way, guys, uh, I mentioned in the first video about that $20 transmission that I was going to pick up and I actually got it for free. Um, so they went over there to buy it for the 20 bucks. Um, you know, a guy had actually a couple of Barracudas in there. Um, I think he, you know, he had three Barracudas, uh, a Coronet in there, um, like a 68 Camaro Corvette. You know, he had a bunch of cool stuff like 67, I think, or 70 uh, GMC Blazer. Uh, or I'm sorry, Chevrolet Blazer in there. Um, you know, he had a really cool shop and a lot of cool stuff. So we got to John, he's like, hey, do you have an LA camshaft lying around for a small block? And I'm like, yes, I do. He goes, I'll trade you even up for it. I'll, he followed me home basically, you know, 35 minutes away, because what happened is his machine shop uh, put in some new bearings for his engine, um, for his camshaft bearings, and basically the camshaft would not fit in. And so what you do is you, you know, basically, slot a groove into the camshaft um, journal, right, where the cam's gonna go in and then you slowly turn it and then it kind of clearances a little bit of the bearing material. Um, and I've got a camshaft here, I can do a little short video on and show you guys what I mean. Um, but basically he wanted to train, uh, trade a stock camshaft that I'm never gonna use. I was gonna use it for some art or something and 
and we traded even up for a transmission. So I'm going to do a complete build series on that transmission. Um, you know, going through how to do everything, tear it apart, inspect it, um, you know, what to order, what to replace, how easy it is to put back together, how to check your clearances, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, in a lot more detail than I am with these two videos. This is more kind of tear down inspection, put it back together because everything looked good. Because um, this transmission had all new bearing, or I'm sorry, all new bushings put in it. Um, you know, I'll go through all of that with a complete build series um, for a 904. And pretty much you can use that same theory for a, a 727. So anyway, sorry for the long-winded part of getting from, from there to here. But now let me go ahead and set this up and I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, so you can see I've got gear set here. All right, I double-checked it, make sure there's no cracks and stuff. Everything looks good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install this. You can see I've already got the band here installed first. We'll slip her in like so. Get the band lifted up. All right, make sure she is not all the way seated yet. There she goes. Ah. All right, take it back out. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so what happened is the, the band slipped out from under here, so I had to pull the drum back out so I could get the band back under that. All right, so now we can go ahead, put this guy in. So again, you can see another gear set, right? So double checked it, made sure everything was good. Whoops. Uh, so the washer popped out. And if you don't have your washer in place here good, all right, this washer here popped out of place. And if the washer is not in here all the way and it's just resting down here, basically this will not seat all the way down. And what happens is there's a snap ring you need to install right here. Uh, you will not be able to install that snap ring. So make sure um, you can use like a, it will suck right to this if you use a little Vaseline or a little transmission fluid is on it. Or if you're running hydraulic fluid, you can use that as well. I use a mostly hydraulic fluid with a couple quarts of Type F uh, in my transmission. So now we'll go ahead and seat that back in there. And we'll run this down in here. All right. Ah, it looks like it came unseated again. And that's why I like to have this sitting up vertical. All right, so what happened, guys? That slipped out on me as I was trying to install it. All right. There we go. Now I can go ahead and install the snap ring on the end of, the, of that input shaft. All right, so here's the little snap ring I was talking about. Like I said, guys, I'll do a much uh, better video uh, detailed of how to do all this. Okay, snap ring is on. Don't forget that little guy on the end of the input shaft there. Set that in there. All right. So now what I need to do is I want to take the transmission. I need to put on my cross member here first. Then I want to set this up vertical so I can put those other parts in. And the reason being, okay, is when, all right, you can see this is going to slip over like so. And basically, we need to get this all the way down like so, all right? 
So what happens is if you're setting the transmission on its side, what can happen is, because you're trying to put in the front pump, this will kind of come dislodged like that. And then if you don't have your frictions lined up to the splines, especially the very last one, now you're trying to force your front pump, okay, on this, and then you're basically gonna damage that last friction. So, you know, I, want, I like to set the transmission up vertical, and then basically I can take this, drop it in straight down. And then I can set the front pump on at that point in time, bolt it in, and then I can set the transmission back down on its side like this, and do the valve body, you know, and uh, do my band adjustments and stuff. All right, guys, so I've got the transmission in the, trans in the garbage can. You, know, you can see it's sitting vertical now, um, so I can do the rest of the assembly at this point. So uh, down inside here, uh, I don't know if I can show it to you or not. Uh, see what we can do here. Um, let me tilt the camera down a little. But all right, so right inside here is that snap ring I was showing you. Um, See, whoop, right about there is that snap ring I was showing you, and here's that little fiber washer as well uh, that you need to make sure is there. So what I've done is also, if you notice right here and here, I put in two bolts, I believe these are 5 sixteenths, that I cut the heads off to help me align the front pump and hold the gasket in place from moving when I go to put it in. So that way I can set the front pump on there uh, the gasket in place, the front pump, um, when I get to that point, and it'll help line it up, make it a, life a whole lot easier. So cut the bolt heads off those bolts. These are, I think, are like two and a half inches long. Now, I went ahead and pre-assembled the gear set. Um, I've also set the band down in there as well uh, that's going to clamp onto this. But I pre-assembled the gear set so that I know, you know, that the uh, frictions inside here line with the spline there. So now what I need to do is the, the frictions here line up with the splines in this drum. So to do that, we kind of set her down in there, kind of rock her around a little bit. And what you're looking for, and this is why I'm holding it vertical, is that that, okay, basically this top part here lines up and sets in there. Now you can see as I tilt it back, see how it falls out, right? You know, now if I were to, you know, if I move, if I were to set the transmission vertical, this would fall right back in place. So what happens is when you're lying this down, this happens, and then what can happen is that friction can be misaligned, that, that last one with the spline. When you go to push your torque convert, or I'm sorry, your front pump on, you can actually damage, right, your friction and when you go start and run this thing, you know, obviously possibly burn up, you know, those frictions there. So that's why I hold the transmission vertical like so. I've got the band down in here. So that way I can tighten it when I go to do it. So it's already in place. So now I can set my gasket in here. And let me make sure I get that lined up right. Oops, flip her over. Okay. All right, gasket's in place. Now we can take the front pump, line up the front pump here. Looks like she needs to go right there. Okay. And you can see how easy that aligned everything up. Um, you know, the gasket now is lined up, the front pump is able to drop in, and now I can basically put these a couple bolts in at this point in time, and then I can remove these two and put the other bolts in. So this lined up really well. You should, if you're with your seal kit, right, you'll get these new little steel washers. They have a coating on either side of them. That's to make sure that these bolts seal up to the front pump. So make sure you put those steel washers in place.
Now the other thing I did do, and I didn't, I didn't uh, show you guys, is I did take, so one thing I did guys is before I, uh, I put the new seal on the front pump, right? The big seal. I put some Vaseline around the seal as well. Um, so that way when I, this is, this front pump's gonna go down a little further into the case and seek. Um, so I put some Vaseline on the seal. You can use some transmission fluid or whatever you need to. So when you tighten these bolts down, you know, it'll help um, the seal and the pump to slide down without causing damage to the seal. All right, guys, and you know, I went ahead and you noticed I did a crisscross pattern, right? Just like tightening up a wheel or a cylinder head. I kind of go went opposite just to make sure it draw down nice and even, you know, for the front pump. And you, if you noticed, you know, the front pump with the uh, Vaseline went down real easy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down flat on the, the little workbench here. I'm gonna adjust the bands first, and then I'm gonna air check to make sure that everything applies like it should. Um, since I didn't take any of the seals apart or anything, shouldn't be an issue, but I'm gonna just double check it just to make sure everything is okay before I start putting the valve body and stuff back on and buttoning this thing up. All right, guys, so now it's time to adjust the bands. So there's one adjuster inside the transmission and one external to the transmission uh, on the driver's side. Um, so, John Cope Racing, because I'm running his reverse manual valve body, uh, recommends doing tightening the, the uh, adjuster to 72 inch pounds, um, and then to turn two full turns uh, to loosen it. And that is for both the low reverse band and the front band here. So, let me go ahead and tighten this to 72 inch pounds. There we go. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to mark this with like a silver Sharpie. You may not be able to see it, but I like to mark it so I know where I'm starting from when I do my two revolutions. So now I'm gonna put my little wrench on here and basically back it off two turns. Oops, there's one turn. There's two turns. So now I know I've got two turns. So now what I can do is tighten this lock nut down here and this low reverse band will be adjusted. And then I'll do the same thing to the front band.
All right. And now we've got the low reverse band adjusted. I'll do the same thing to the front band. All right, so now we've got the front band adjusted. Uh, again, 72 inch pounds, backed it off two turns, lower reverse band, you know, tightened it to 72 inch pounds, backed it off two turns. We've pretty much got this part of it done. We could probably slap the valve body on and put the spring on here, you know, put the pan on it, call it good. But I'm gonna do a quick air check at very low pressure. I wanna make sure the bands apply and I hear that these drums, you know, or the uh, clutches also apply, um, you know, so that way I know that, you know, I don't have again a seal issue. I shouldn't because they didn't take it apart, but I'm going to do a quick air check here and just to make sure everything functions before I go ahead and put the valve body in. So I zoomed it in a little bit closer and I'm running about uh, right around 50 PSI. And so this hole here should apply this and you can see it's moving and releasing. This hole here, you can see, applies the front band. There's a little rod here that's lifting up this lever, applying the band. So this one is front. This one I believe is rear. So this should be front, this should be rear. Feel that little thud? Hear the thud. Basically, you know, what's within here, those are the friction discs being applied in pressure, so they're working. That means I don't have a leak. Again, front, rear. Hear that? So we are checked good. So the next thing I can do guys is we can throw on the valve body at this point in time. So with that said, let me go ahead and put the spring in here so I don't forget it. We will grab the valve body here. Um, also make sure you put, if you put a new seal in um, for your selector lever, right? For your gear uh, to lubricate that. So again, just a slip a little. All right guys, so if you're having trouble, all right guys, if you're having trouble putting your rod in, right, for your parking pole here, what I suggest you do is take your finger, put it down in here like so, and then put a pair of pliers or something on your output shaft of the transmission and turn it slightly and you'll feel it give where you can put your finger in it real easy. And then you can basically take this rod, force it in there like so, and then you can drop your valve body in. There she goes. Neutral safety and there you go. So again, if you're having trouble getting the rod put in, take your finger, push it against it, turn the output shaft on your transmission with a pair of pliers and you'll feel all of a sudden give and you'll be able to put your finger in. And then all you gotta do is take that rod and you can slip it right in, um, your valve body right in, or the parking pawl rod, I should say, right in. And now we can go ahead and finger tighten the valve body bolts and then we'll tighten them. All right, guys, and so I've ran these down finger tight for the most part. Um, manual suggests we torque these to 100 inch pounds. So I'm gonna do kind of a cross pattern, you know, just to make sure I get even distribution. So what I'm probably gonna do is actually, let me set my torque wrench to 50 inch pounds. All right. 
Yep, 50 inch pounds. So I'm gonna start with 50 inch pounds and I'm gonna just kind of work it up. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do it at 100 inch pounds. because I am running a deeper oil pan um, I need to install this spacer here and here's my fresh new transmission filter All right, guys. Now that we've got the transmission, all right, guys. Now that we've got the transmission filter installed, I can go ahead and put on the transmission pan. Before that, I'm just going to wipe my surface off here real good, uh, just to make sure it's clean. Then I need to clean my pan out yet real fast, and then I'll get the new gasket and pan, and we'll set it on place and we'll bolt it on. So hang on, let me get everything cleaned up. Yes, so you can see, filter is installed. Got the new pan gasket here installed or setting in place. Got my transmission pan all cleaned up, at least the uh, inside. I'll have to wipe the outside down here. And now we'll go ahead and stick in the bolts and uh, tighten her up. Well, I got. Well, all right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. You can see the 904 is a pretty simple transmission. Now, granted, I didn't go into a great deal detail, um, you know, about rebuilding. It was more me inspecting it and kind of give you guys a little bit of view of a few things as I went through it. Uh, like I said, I do have another transmission. Once I get the engine and transmission in here, um, get the fuel system fixed, um, which I will be doing a video on that, um, you know, do a few other things I need to do to it. I will do the build series on that. So uh, I'll probably be starting that in eh, probably about a month maybe um, from now. Um, for those of you following along, for those that are new to the channel, this may have been filmed months ago or maybe years ago, depending on how long it's been up on YouTube. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys liked uh, what I've kind of been doing uh, for content. Um, you know, feel free to put in comments stuff that you may want to see or learn about, maybe some stuff I did to my car or my shop in general, you know, as you've been kind of seeing some of the crap I have in here. Uh, you know, um, you know, feel free to like, share, subscribe, you know, all that stuff, as they say. Uh, I'm getting closer to 500 subscribers. I really could help you guys as support to help me get to that thousand threshold. Um, so if you guys can share, you know, like, subscribe, it, it's a huge help to me. I'd love to be able to keep doing this stuff for you guys, um, you know, and who knows, maybe make a, just a little bit of money to help support, uh, you know, all the time I'm spending doing this and, and just make a couple of dollars here and there to maybe at least pay, maybe buy a new set of tires, if nothing else. So I don't plan on this being a huge YouTube channel, but you know what? 
anything that uh, I can do to help you guys along. Like I said, if it helps me buy, you know, a set of tires for the racing season or something like that, then I'm all for it, right? Um, just anything to help me out. So anyway, uh, like I said, thanks for again watching, guys. Get out your shop, have some fun, um, drop some comments, and let me know if anything else, like I said, you want to learn or see. Take care.